When Discovery launches on NASA's 33rd mission to the ISS, the seven-member crew of STS-131 will begin a 13-day mission to resupply the space station. Packed inside the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module in Discovery's payload bay are experiment racks for better exercise and in-depth Earth observations. The shuttle crew will perform three spacewalks to replace an ammonia tank assembly and a rate gyro assembly on the ISS and to conduct other maintenance work. STS-131 also marks a significant spaceflight milestone for the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency as two Japanese astronauts will fly on orbit at the same time. Astronauts on STS-131 will make up the last seven-member shuttle crew. Four of the astronauts have flown in space on previous missions, and three are first-time flyers. Navy Captain Alan Poindexter is the commander of Discovery. He last flew as the pilot of STS-122. This is his second space flight. Air Force Colonel Jim Dutton is the pilot for STS-131 his first ride uphill. He will conduct robotic operations with both the shuttle and station arms, and he will fly Discovery as it undocks from the station. Rick Mastracchio is Mission Specialist 1. He will serve as lead spacewalker during all three EVAs on this, his third spaceflight. Mission Specialist 2 is Educator Astronaut Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger. On this, her first space flight, she will act as the IV, the intravehicular officer, during the three STS-131 spacewalks. Lindenberger, the last educator astronaut scheduled to fly on the shuttle, will participate in two interactive educational events, where students will ask her about her mission and her past as an educator. She will also record several video segments on robotics for post-flight educational materials. Stephanie Wilson, Mission Specialist 3, is making her third visit to the ISS. She will be responsible for operating both the shuttle and station robotic arms. Mission Specialist 4 is JAXA astronaut Naoko Yamazaki. She is the loadmaster for the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module, or MPLM, as cargo is transferred to and from station. Clay Anderson is Mission Specialist 5. He flew as an ISS flight engineer during Expedition 15 in 2007. During this mission, he will perform three spacewalks. STS-131 will fly the Leonardo MPLM, packed with over four tons of equipment for transfer to station during the module's last round trip to the ISS. I think the biggest challenges on uh, STS-131 are to uh, be able to complete the transfer in the allotted time. Some hardware has constraints, so some hardware needs to be transferred in a certain order and in a certain way. One scientific addition to the station's Destiny Laboratory window is WARF, the Window Observational Research Facility. The new WARF instruments, including cameras, multispectral and hyperspectral scanners, camcorders and sensors, will enable the ISS crew to photograph and study global climates, land and sea formations, and crop weather damage. Another ISS science rack delivered in the Leonardo moving van is the Muscle Atrophy Research and Exercise System, or MARES. The MARES will help astronauts exercise seven different human joints and gauge their muscle strength surrounding those joints. The results will determine whether the countermeasures designed to prevent muscle atrophy are working. This mission will also mark the first time that two Japanese astronauts will be on orbit at the same time. JAXA shuttle astronaut Naoko Yamazaki joins Expedition 23 flight engineer Soichi Noguchi of the Japanese Space Agency, who will already be on station when Yamazaki arrives. 
Soichi and I are scheduled to do uh, several tasks together, like uh, experiment rock transfer and installation of the space station. So we are looking forward to working with each other. And we are also looking forward to sharing some Japanese cultures among the crew members. During STS-131, Mastrakio and Anderson will step outside the station for three scheduled spacewalks. Lindenberger will orchestrate the spacewalks as their IV, or intravehicular officer. A major spacewalking objective during this mission is to remove and replace an ammonia tank assembly on the station's S-1 truss. The swap out of the 1,800 pound tank about the size of a standalone freezer, helps resupply the ISS thermal control system. As big as the space station robotic arm is, we can't base it in one place and reach all the way into the back of the payload bay, which is where the new ammonia tank assembly is, and then reach back over the back side of the space station's truss to where we're going to install it. So it requires three spacewalks. During EVA-1, Anderson will lift the new ATA out of Discovery's payload bay. Then, Wilson and Dutton will grapple the new tank with the station's robotic arm. They will attach the new tank to a temporary location on a POA, an attachment point on one of the station's mobile base systems. Next, Mastrakio and Anderson will remove and replace a rate gyro assembly, or RGA, located on the S0 truss. The first of the two RGAs, located on the port side of station, was swapped out during STS-128. The RGAs help stabilize the ISS attitude control systems. On EVA-2, Mastrakio and Anderson will disconnect the old ATA tank on the S-1 truss. Dutton and Wilson will grapple the old tank with the station arm and fly it to the front side of the truss, where the spacewalkers will strap it temporarily to a CETA cart, a small movable platform on the station. Then Dutton and Wilson will grapple and fly the new ATA tank that was temporarily stowed on the mobile base system to the S-1 truss, where Mastrakio and Anderson will install it to station. During the third and final EVA, Station arm operators Wilson and Dutton will grapple the old ATA tank from its temporary location on a CETA cart. Then spacewalkers Mastrakio and Anderson will secure the old tank in Discovery's payload bay. Before calling it a day, Anderson will install a camera on and remove a blanket from the special purpose dexterous manipulator. He will also remove the lightweight adapter plate assembly from the Columbus lab for the return home. I think the end of the shuttle program is a time to celebrate uh, all of the all the accomplishments, all of the uh, great work that we've done with the shuttle over the past 30 years. It's time to uh, to think about all of the uh, the great work and the great folks that worked on the shuttle program throughout the years. When I meet those folks, of course, the first thing I do is I say thank you, because without them, we could not do this job. They sacrifice uh, weekends, holidays, and work long hours. We try to share the story of the mission and bring it home to them so they feel as much of a part uh, of the on-orbit mission as they can. Being an astronaut is a very special thing because in a way you represent those thousands of people when you're up there. It would not be possible to do uh, what, what an astronaut does without all the support that we get from, uh, from people across the agency and at our various contractors.